Continuing to increase your child's independence throughout elementary supports their development practically, academically, and emotionally. Practically, well, your child is learning how to take care of themselves, take care of their belongings, and to take care of the environment. Learning takes practice, and mistakes are common in the beginning. So use this time in the, their childhood to practice and develop good habits and skills that they'll need in adulthood. That way, by the time they're an adult, they'll be a pro at this. Academically, independence has been proven to help children develop critical thinking skills, reading comprehension, an understanding of sequence and cause and effect relationships, and interaction with the real physical world helps them to later understand physics, chemistry, and biology. Real world experience is also how common sense becomes common. Emotionally, independence helps develop your child's sense of agency, their self-esteem, gratitude, and responsibility. It creates what's called an internal locus of control, where your child feels that they make things happen in their life instead of things happening to them. There are two realms of independence that we'll be talking about. The first one has to do with what your child can do for themselves. And the second has more to do with how they can think for themselves. As we teach them to independently do things for themselves, it's important to first consider accessibility. Before you show them how to do something, make the things that your child needs for that activity accessible for them in the house without your assistance. This might mean moving things to lower cabinets or shelves, having empty baskets on hand, or having a step stool nearby. Many parents are unsure of what an appropriate level of independence is for their child. There's a lot of conflicting information out there. Or some might be surprised by some of the things their child is actually ready for, or even already doing in the classroom. What are the activities that a six-year-old is ready to learn to do for themselves? I'll go over a list of activities, and as I do, I want you to put them into three categories. What your child can already do, what they are currently learning, and what you would like to work towards in the next couple of months. These categories and lists are for you to think about, but not for your children. Getting them excited about independence will make it much easier to teach them new things than if they know that there's a checklist they're supposed to be following. So what can a six-year-old already do independently if taught? Enter and exit the car, buckle and unbuckle their seat belts, choose their outfit and dress themselves, including tying shoelaces and zipping jackets. Remember what they need to take before leaving the house. Carry their belongings. Choose an activity, get out what they need, and then clean up after themselves. Focus for 15 minutes or longer. Follow three verbal instructions. Memorize addition and multiplication facts. Tell time on an analog clock. Brush their teeth, comb their hair, and take a shower. Call a relative or a friend. Some of the chores that they can do are to make their own bed, set the table, wipe countertops, wash their dishes, dust, sweep and use the dustpan, water plants, feed pets, make a snack, fold laundry and put it away, and sort dirty laundry. Throughout lower elementary, you can gradually increase their level of independence by teaching them how to make their own breakfast and lunch, help make dinner, follow a recipe, help make the grocery list and budget, put away groceries, take out the trash, 
Unload and load the dishwasher. Vacuum. Mop. Do the laundry. Help with yard work or gardening. Walk the dog. Speak on the phone to make appointments or get information. Follow up to five verbal instructions and eight written instructions. And to cross the street. Now, that would be a lot of chores to do every week, but teach them how to do these things. And once they know how, you can limit the number of chores that they're really doing. They don't have to do all of them every week. <laughs> Children of all ages want to learn how to do things for themselves. But starting in elementary, they will now want to think for themselves. Here are six ways you can help support this important developmental milestone. Instead of giving instructions, ask questions. So instead of instructing, set the table, ask, what do we need to get out to set the table? You're priming them for what you're really asking them to do, but by asking the question, they're thinking, which is much more exciting to the elementary child than being instructed. Or you could say, don't forget your water bottle, but instead ask the question, what do you need to remember to take to school? Number two, instead of giving evaluations, ask questions. So when they show you something that they've worked on, maybe a drawing at home, or maybe they bring some completed work home from school, resist the urge to say good job. It actually lowers self-esteem to say that. Instead, you can ask questions like, tell me more about this. What inspired you to do this? How does it feel to have worked on something so hard and now have it completed? Or you could even go a step further and help them with some self-evaluation. What did you do well? What would you like to improve on in the future? Number three, instead of giving information, ask questions. Instead of answering a question or asking Siri or letting them ask Siri, boomerang the question back to them. Where can we find this information? Or how can we find this information? Let them start to use those observation skills or those critical thinking skills of what book do we have? What newspaper do we have? How can I find this information? Can I ask a relative? Or Maybe you'd like to teach them a little bit about how the weather's changing. We're getting deeper into fall. Instead of just explaining that to them, you could ask, what's the weather forecast for this week? Do we still have the forecast from last week? Is it very different? How can we prepare for this week? Number four, instead of counting, comparing, or calculating in your head, ask real math problems. Now, this is a little hard to remember at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll love it. So for instance, they're setting the table. It's one of their responsibilities. You can forget to ask or forget to remember that uh, the grandparents are joining us for dinner tonight. So suddenly after the table is set, oh, grandparents are coming. How many more places should we set? So now they're trying to figure out how many more. That's something that's so automatic to us adults, but it's not automatic to the child. So it's good to ask those kinds of questions. Or your bedtime is at eight. How many minutes do we have to read your book? How many pages do you think we can read in that time? You could play a fun game, which is a little challenging in the grocery store, but it's something we do as a they're going out trip to the grocery store, they should have a running total of whatever they're putting in the cart and then see how close they can get to the cashier's total. For something that's a little easier, they can count the turns on the way to school and then see how many of those are left turns and how many are right turns. Number five, teach them and model self-soothing techniques. So just like those automatic math problems that we solve in our head, 
self-soothing techniques are another thing that we're doing in our minds so automatically, but we have to remember to outwardly explain those to children. So explain to them about deep breathing, healthy self-talk, daily gratitude practices, or whatever else it is that you use for self-soothing. Number six, give them unsupervised play in a safe environment. Let them entertain themselves. Creativity springs from boredom. If they're playing with other children, let them solve their own conflicts. In the beginning, you'll need to help them with conflict resolution, but once they get the hang of it, trust that they'll figure it out. Or maybe there's a problem that doesn't have anything to do with a conflict. Maybe they're trying to make up rules for a game. Don't jump in and offer your solutions. That's part of the fun of their game. I hope that you found this all helpful and that you're feeling inspired to try out these ideas. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. And thank you for putting in the time and effort to support your, ch your child at home.